Welcome back to your channel. This video is going to present exercises with the empty set, so let's get started. Uh, the first exercise says, given the empty set, then the empty set is containing the empty set. At this moment, if you want to try this exercise on your own, uh, feel free to do so. Uh, you can pause the video at this moment. And also, if you want to see a certain approach for solving this exercise, uh, continue to watch the video. Uh, for solving this exercise, uh, it is possible to start with the statement, uh, the empty set is a set. And after this, it is possible to use an exercise that was proven on the containment of sets. Uh, that being that for any set A, the set A is contained in the set A. So in this case, for the empty set, the empty set is contained in the empty set. And uh, this would be it for this exercise. Uh, so this exercise would be short. Uh, so moving on to the second exercise, it says, uh, given the empty set, if A is a set, then the empty set is containing A. Uh, also, uh, at this moment, if you want to try this exercise uh, on your own, uh, feel free to do so. Uh, you can pause the video. Also, if you want to comment or share your, solu your solution, uh, feel free to do so in the comments down below. Also, if you want to see a certain approach for solving this exercise, I continue watching the video. In this case, for solving this exercise, it could happen that there are not many ideas in order to solve it. Uh, and in general, if uh, there is a point where you get stuck or something like doesn't fit into having the next idea, uh, it is always possible to go into like a mathematical devil cycle. Okay? Or in a more uh, academic way of saying it, it's also the proof by contradiction. Or even if you want a more uh, fancy wording, it is also called reduction ad absurd. But it's more common to find it as proof by contradiction. So what's going to be the idea for this type of procedure? So as kind of the metaphor implies, the mathematical devil's advocate is going to start as a devil's advocate. So in order to in, in order to argument in favor of something, uh, uh, we are going to take the against perspective. And uh, that is in order for this case, we have the claim that the empty set is containing A. So taking the opposite stand uh, would be to say, okay, well, suppose that the empty set containing A is false. And at this point, we need to use the definition of that the empty set is containing A. So here I write that definition. And OK, what's going on? Well, first of all, this quirky A in here is, which pretty much looks like a flipped A, is called a for all, or at least that is the way that it should be read. So the entire thing is supposed for all S S in A in the empty set implies that S is in A. And the for all S S in the empty set implies that S is in A. That's the definition of the empty set being contained in A. And we are supposing that this is going to be false. Um, now, working with propositions that are false is not that easy. It is better to work with propositions that are true. Um, However, you may remember that negating a proposition that is false gives a proposition that is true. And that's also one of the uh, typical arguments in logic. So now we would want to negate the proposition that we have above. However, for doing that, we need to negate a for all, and we also need to negate an implication. Uh, so for doing that, first, uh, it is important to remember that the negation of a for all is an exists, and this quirky E that is flipped is exists. And also we need to negate an implication. And for negating an implication, and as it is already showing, uh, we keep the first part of the implication, we change the connector of the implication by an AND, and we negate the second part. So in this case, we have that exists S, S in the empty set, and S not in A. And this uh, curve slash E 
is is not innate. At least that is the most common way of reading it. And because we come from a false statement, this new statement is true because it is the negation. Okay, so now we can work with this. And for the last statement that we have, we have an exist S in the empty set. And this is important to pick up because this is impossible. Uh, by the definition of the empty set, this cannot happen. This is a contradiction. Um, yeah, so if we have an S in the empty set, uh, this is always false. And also we have that exist S in the empty set and that is joined with an and. So the entire expression is false. And now we have reached a falsehood, which is a contradiction. And so what's now going to happen? Well, we started with the metaphor of the devil's advocate. And as in a devil's advocate, even though we are going against certain idea, we just end up with, okay, well, the consequences are not that bad. Well, as you may remember for mathematics, that's not enough. We want something uh, always hard and necessary. Well, in this case, uh, well, our, our devil's advocate is not only that it's not that bad, well, the other possibility is impossible, uh, pretty much. So there is no other possibility. Our, our first claim needs to be true. So that is uh, the empty set is containing A is true, and this would already give us to the end of the proof. And also in this case, it will be important to catch on a little bit of this trend of the proof by contradiction. Okay, uh, continuing with the exercise two, there is another approach, which is a little bit tricky because it uses kind of a weird property of implication, which you can also check on uh, logic videos. So again, now let's start with S in the empty set, and just treating this as a common proof of containment. So as always, we start with let S in the empty set, uh, our magic, a phrase, uh, however, this is always false. And because this is always false, uh, now a quirky thing that happens with implications is that we can imply anything. And something that we would like to imply is that now S is in A. And this would already form an argument that proves a containment, the containment being that the empty set is containing A. And that would be it. But again, this is a little bit tricky because it's not that common to use that quirky property of implications in proofs. However, it is completely valid. And now we can go for exercise number three, which says given the empty set, if A is a set, then the union of A and the empty set is equal to A, and the intersection of A and the empty set is the empty set. So a little bit interesting. So if you want to try this exercise on your own, uh, feel free to do so. You can pause the video. If you get a solution or want to write comments, uh, feel free to do so below. And if you want to check a certain proof for this exercise, uh, continue watching the video. So for the first part, uh, actually we are going to have that the empty set is already containing A. Uh, this is from exercise number two. And also we can use now an exercise that was already proven uh, from union and containment. That is already going to give us that uh, because the empty set is containing A, then the union of A and the empty set is equal to A. And similarly for part two, we also have from exercise number two that the empty set is containing A and by an exercise of intersection and containment, we already have that the intersection of A and the empty set is equal to the empty set. And this would be it for the exercise number three. So uh, very important to have uh, uh, in hand and in the mind all those exercises that have been proven because uh, this is pretty much a quirk of mathematics because always uh, information that was proven beforehand is sometimes useful uh, for 
later exercises. So keep that in mind. Uh, that would be all for this exercise. Let me know if you like the video. Uh, you can leave me questions, comments. If you want me to treat a certain topic, uh, let me know. And uh, thanks for watching.